Oak House Church brings to you the word of life, which is able to build you up and offer you an inheritance among all those that are sanctified. Sit back and listen, and may your life become more like that of Christ as you encounter His Word. God bless you. And when I begin to think like that and begin to reflect that way, I say to Him, Lord, let everything around me fade away, and let Jesus Christ alone, and Him alone, be glorified in my life and in, in him there is nothing in this life that is worth anything when you meet with Jesus Christ when you see him when you behold his glory his presence even if they give you all this world put together you will not take but presently, we can um, we are being tempted to take the whole world at the expense of that same man, Jesus Christ. But we can only we can understand to an extent because we 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 are ruled and we are controlled by what we can see by what we can touch or what we can feel as what run our life that's what we could control it's now that i'm beginning to understand when i used to hear the word the lord is good and then there is an echo that says all the time you may not understand it now because when they used to say it in those days I just joined the queue it has been a slogan the Lord is good all the time but I've come to find out that God is good he's good not because he's good towards me he's not good because he's giving me food to eat and water to drink and he blesses the works of my hand. God, God as a person, his nature is good. When you come in contact with him, you will not want to eat food. If they give you food, you will not even remember. When you come in contact with that man, Jesus Christ, That is a reason Paul, I've read in Ephesians, I read through the Colossians, he kept saying one thing, that the reason why God has sent him, the minister to the Gentiles, is to make all men see, to help us to see Christ. That is his assignment, to help us to see Christ. Praying for people to have breakthrough, praying for people to be blessed by God, praying for people to be delivered, praying for people to, you know, so many things that we pray for people. There is one prayer that is of utmost importance, that the best prayer ever. You know what you do? You just take somebody's hand, being able to take his hand and endure with him and have patience with him and just keep managing, keep trying, keep working to bring him to Christ. Once you bring him to Christ, leave him. You have finished everything. My own assignment as a pastor is done. If I can succeed in bringing us to Jesus Christ, whether you are possessed, 
whether you are obsessed, whether you are poor, whether you are sick, whether you are dying of cancer is not important. All that I need to do is to bring you to Christ. I don't mean bringing you to Christ and leading you, getting born again. That's not what I'm talking about. That's not it. What I mean is bring you face to face. You meet with Christ. You have an encounter. And this kind of encounter is not the type of encounter you fall on the ground. It's an encounter when you encounter his presence. You see Jesus Christ. When you see him. I don't care whether you are a fornicator, whether you are an adulterer, whether you are an armed robber, whether you are a cheat. I don't care who and what it is that you are. If I can succeed in taking you and bring you right in his presence. Mary Magdalene came in contact with her. Case closed. The woman of Samaria, an adulterous woman, she came in contact with him. Case closed. The 12 apostles, his disciples, save one, all illiterate fishermen failed in their career, failed in their businesses. Nobody knew them. By the time he was through with them, <laughs> the world, we are looking for them. Is Jesus Christ. <clears throat> He's a person. You know, when we talk about faith, when we talk about confession, it's beyond confessing the word of God. It's beyond confessing the Bible. By his stripes I have been healed. It is well. It is much, 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 much than that. That is the reason why he said in John chapter 17, verse 3, he said, this is eternal life. From verse 1. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son that thy son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God. <laughs> the only true God. These words, these words, they, these words are so, is so deep. Is, you know what you know what is when you say something is pregnant a woman is pregnant this word is pregnant is so deep is so loaded if you begin to unravel what is inside it will probably take you a lifetime and this is life eternal that they might know thee the only true God <clears throat> And Jesus Christ, the one that you have sent. This is what life is, eternal life, to know him. That is why everything that you do, you strive with everything that is in you to know him. That is the reason why Paul, he gave up every single thing everything nothing left so that he might know he, he paid that price in philippians chapter 3 verse 8 <coughs> yea doubtless i count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of christ jesus my lord for whom i have suffered the loss 
of all things and do count them but dung that I may win him, Christ. If you meet with Christ, your life is made. You may be born again, oh. You, we, I'm not doubting, I'm not arguing, I'm not in contention as to whether we, you are born again, you are not. You are born again, I agree. 100%. 100% I agree, you are born again. Not just that you are born again, you are filled with the Holy Ghost. And there is evidence to prove that you are full of the Holy Spirit because you speak in tongues. And then I don't have any doubt you have been baptized in the water. And you take communion and all of that. <laughs> but there is one thing that is remaining. There is one thing that is remaining. The day, the day, the day, the day you meet with Christ. Hmm? That very day, from that moment, from that moment till you get to your grave. There will never be a dull moment in your life. Forget this thing. We, are the, we don't know who, we don't know what it is. We just do not, our prayer is that God will open up. Let Holy Spirit help us to have an experience. I'm not just talking about experience. And, let's have an, a personal experience. Encounter. You meet with Jesus Christ. Not just that you saw him in the vision or had dreams and all of that. There is something about the man, Jesus. You know what Paul said? He said, until God revealed... Hi. Until God opened the veil and he met with Christ. From that day, Paul was never the same man. We, we grapple over shadows. I find it, except, the, except God helps me, I won't be able to communicate this truth to you. About you, surrender everything that you think you have. I, I know you pray. I know you fast. I know you read your Bible. I want you, I want you to come face to face with Jesus Christ. Men and women who have met with him, look at their lives. You won't hear any story about backsliding. You won't hear any story of adultery, immorality, and all kinds of... You won't, you won't hear it. You won't, you won't hear that from them. Men who have genuine encounter, who have met with him. Men like Job, he said, even though he slay me, yet Job had an encounter, one on one, with Jehovah, they got read the book of Job. That's why the life of that man stood out. Moses met with him. I don't mean by miracles and all of that. Well, I mean a person he showed up. Who did you see in the midst of that burning bush? Is he think he's just bush that is burning? Is the glory. God showed up. It was God that is born in that fire he was seen. It's not ordinary fire. That's why the Bible said that because he saw the invisible Moses, that was what gave him. He said, he said bye bye to Egypt, to Pharaoh, to everything. And 
any man who have seen him who have had an encounter eh, nothing in this life will matter to you nothing nothing you see all this thing that you are fighting and you are quarreling and you are going to court and you are trying to steal and cheat and all of that the only reason is because we have not met him when you meet him you can't think about any other thing except him you will not bother whether you are married or you are not married whether you have money or you don't all those things are dead they are rotten you know what Paul said he said I counted them as what don'ts you know what is dung poo poo from the enos of cows dongs with all his knowledge with all his wisdom with all that he has achieved he said they are nothing but dongs because he met with Christ the problem has always been that the, our eyes have been shifted from that man because he said look unto him what else are you looking at? He said, look unto him as the author and finisher of your faith. He is one, him alone, nothing else. We have had prayer warriors, people who pray, and yet they have not met with him. I had people who have studied the Bible, read it, read it inside out, back to back. Yet they have not had an anchor, they have not met him. Ever learning and ever coming to the knowledge of truth. You can be born again, but yet you have not come to the knowledge of truth. That's how that has always been our problem. We play religion a lot. Show me a man that have met Christ. <laughs> you know what James said? He said, show me your faith and I will show you my works. Show me a man that has met with Christ. I will show you, I will tell you a man that is changed, transformed. Give me 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians 3.18 Corinthians 3.18 But we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord we all with an open face beholding as in a glass who the glory of the lord who is the where is the glory of the lord give me second corinthians chapter 4 verse 6 and then you come back here For God who commanded light to shine out of darkness has shined in our heart to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God where? In the face of Jesus Christ. So when he says we all with an open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord is talking about Jesus Christ. The more you behold him <laughs> Let me be very honest with you and let me not lie to you and let me tell you the truth and nothing but the truth. And I lie not and God bears me witness. And I'm not trying by any means to belittle you or to insult you or that is not my intention. But I just want to tell you the truth. If you are beholding the face, if you are doing this, beholding with an open face as in a glass the glory of the Lord 
if we with open face behold his glory, if you do it for one week, if you behold his face for one week, seven days, <laughs> your word will notice you. They will notice you. The problem has always been veil. 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 You know, we need to let that veil go. As long as that veil is on our face, you will see the glory. No change. No transformation. You see, remain the person you are. That is the reason why we come into the presence of God, we come to God, we come to church, and go back the same as we came. Year in, year out. Week in, week out. Month in, month out. The same. No passion, no compassion, no drive, no excitement. So you can understand why, Moses, why David said, when, we are, when I was told, let us go to the house, he, knew, he said he was, he was so glad because he knew what was it all about. That is the same man that said, one thing do I desire and that will I seek all the days of my life. To do what? To behold his beauty. That's why David stood out. That is why he said, even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I'm not afraid. Fear! How can you, how can you have his glory with you? How can you encounter? You know what, you know what happened to Moses? The Bible said concerning Moses. <laughs> he was not afraid of Pharaoh. He wasn't afraid what he was going to do. He dared him, his power and his authority. He dared the man right in his face and walked out. You know, the fear of Pharaoh was the beginning of wisdom. You walk out on the king of the whole nation. <laughs> there must be something that Moses did. There must be something that he saw. And guess what? These things that are available to us today. The glory. Jesus Christ is a gift. <laughs> you know some of us here. If you drop, if you drop hundred, is it hundred? A hundred is small. If you drop one billion naira now, one billion dollars, and uh, Jesus Christ, we will leave him. Even if you are going to go for Jesus Christ, there will be, there will be some temptation true or false there will be some temptation about the one billion do I take one billion or do I take Jesus even the most spiritual Christian there will still be temptation you know why many of us uh, we are 30% or 30 fold Christians 60 fold Christians, okay? And then there is what? Hundredfold. 30% is 30% Christian. Means that you have Christ 30% and self 70%. Someone that scores 70% in an exam, is he a pass mark? Is a pass mark, is he not? So what it means is that even though you have 30% of Christ, you have 70% of self. Everything gone. You are seen not anywhere. And then you talk about those who are 60%. What it means is that they have 60% of Jesus Christ 
and they have 40% of self. You say pass, weak pass. You see what self is doing. What God is looking for is what? 100%. When you, want, when you have 100% of Christ, how many percent of self do you have? That's why it's 100 fold. It's all about Jesus Christ and nothing else. And that is what Paul said, I have been given the mandate to bring the people to a place to bring you, make you perfect. Hundred. Give me Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 1, verse 26. Colossians 1, 26. Even the mystery which had been hid from ages and from generation, but now is made manifest to the saints, or to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Verse 28. Whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ. 100%. Nothing about that is why he said, When I come to you, I don't want to know anything. Save who? Jesus Christ and Him alone crucified. That is what it is our flesh that is interfering. When you said, When he said, As we behold Him with an open face, as in a not with a veiled face. If you read verse 16, 15 and 16, you hear where he's talking about a veiled face, that Moses put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel will not know when the glory has gone. He said that veil is still there till today in some of us. The, so what God, what the preaching of the gospel, what the preaching of the gospel is supposed to be doing is to help you clear away that veil. To remove the veil so that the light can come. The light of the glory of Jesus Christ can shine in your heart full. Once that light has access to your being, transformation takes place. That is why you see someone who is having a walk with God or with Jesus Christ. Every month you come in contact with that person, you will see a change. You come the next week, you will see a change. You come in two weeks, and you see a change. You come next month, you see a change. At the end of one year, you will see a change. A change in your image and in your likeness. A change in your character and in the quality of life that you live. There will be no place for malice. There will be no place for cheating. There will be no place for lying. There is no place for side attraction. It's Jesus Christ and him alone. Because everything that you need in this life is in him. You know, the coming days, the coming days, the coming weeks and months and years ahead, like I have always said, and it is true and nothing can be truer than that, life will never get better. It has never been better. There is never a time life is better. If you're expecting that it's going to get better, you are wasting your time. You have been deceived. Is going to get worse by the day. What is expected of you and I is to shine. He said, let that light that is in you shine. You are getting stronger and stronger and stronger. So where there is darkness, the light shines. And the Bible says, the light shines in darkness. And darkness could not even stand it. 
Darkness is speaking about evil. It's speaking about wickedness of man and Satan using his men to perpetrate evil and wickedness on the earth. And that wickedness is growing by the day. The one that you are putting your trust in their hands, the one that you are looking up to, they are as corrupt as their master, Satan himself. The solution is not there. You know, it was your dad that sent me a picture today. I went to the internet and checked. The United Nations. This happened uh, on um, 26th of November. If you know anybody that is living in the United States of America, especially in New York, ask the person to please help you. Go to the United, States, uh, United Nations headquarters. You will see the statues they put up there. They say it for peace. The United Nations, the World Health Organization, the all this whatever. It is agency they have developed, they have set up over time to carry out the agenda of their master, Satan. They are all Satanists. They control the nations of the earth. They control the presidents of the earth, of the world. That is why he is the God of this world. No matter what you say, no matter what you think. No matter how you fast, you want to take over the government. So that Christians and all of that will be in the hem of affairs and the government and all of that. You are wasting your time, oh. You are wasting your time. What are we supposed to be doing? Jesus Christ. Get closer to him. Get closer to Christ. Stop looking for where you are going to get help. There is only one man that can help you. Just like you always hear my rev says, the person that you can see can never help you. The one that can help you is the one that you don't see with your eyes. His name is Jesus Christ. The duty or the job of the Holy Spirit is to help you and I as a person to see Christ, to help us reveal Jesus Christ to us and in us. That's the job of the Holy Spirit. That's what he's doing. That is his primary assignment. As we behold him, as we all behold him with an open face, as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image. Image of who? Jesus Christ. From one level of glory to the next level of glory. And who is behind it? By the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord. That's what the Holy Spirit does. What is coming ahead? I'm giving you the solution. The solution is not in any other place. There are so many other things that people are coming up and all of that, strategies. And the worst aspect of it is that so many people who are Christians, because the Bible is saying in the last day there's going to be a great falling away. The ones that are going to be falling away, falling away from what? Falling away from their faith. Faith in who? Faith in Christ. Because in the last day there's going to be perilous times. There is going to be a lot of deception. It's on the increase. Deception is coming from the east, even from within. 
I don't care about the cock and, bull, cock and bull stories they tell from outside. The one that is very deadly are the ones that are coming from within. And he's our leaders in the house of God. They will fall prey. That is why he said in Luke, Luke 21, 34, he said, watch and pray. Take heed to yourself, lest at any time your heart be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, and so that that day cometh upon you unawares. For as a snake shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth, including you and I, the only escape. He said, do not be carried away. He said, we watch therefore, watch ye therefore, and pray always. Not just praying, you watch and pray. You watch, observe what is going on, and then you pray along. You pray, pray in line with the happenings, with the goings. Watch ye therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the son of man watch and pray always brothers and sisters we need to know jesus christ there is a need for us to know him some of us are some of us are thirty percent. If some are thirty percent, some are ten percent. I hope so. if some are ten percent of Christ and ninety percent of self. Some are sixty percent of Christ and forty percent of self. You know what self does? It will neutralize. Every, I've asked you before. If you have peanuts ground nuts the one you call ground nut or peanuts and all of that you have about 10 seeds of it in your hand 10 of them big ones and then you have another one that is even half the size mixed with that 10 and then you open your mouth and throw it inside your mouth and then begin to grind it we need to we need to picture your face on a camera how your face will look like when you begin to chew those ground nuts with that one that is spoiled inside, you know what your face will look like? Ouch! You will find somewhere to spit, vomit everything out because of one, flesh. That is what is killing us. Flesh. He said, we have this treasure in an 18 vessel so that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of man. In 18 vessel. Flesh is our problem. What is the cause of the problem in the marriage, husband and wife, separation and divorce? Flesh. From the beginning to the end, the end result of it is Flesh. Give it, do all your explanation, do all the talking you want to talk. The reason is because of flesh. Apostle is divorcing his wife. Flesh. Apostle. Flesh. Bishop is divorcing his wife. Bishop. Flesh. I've told you, we are living in a day and time nothing if you see the kind of corruption corruption of god's word we are talking about corruption in the world the corruption of the word of god they are corrupting god's word saying what it doesn't say the word of god today is relative it is no more absolute It was a young man I called. I said, do you know that if you divorce your wife and marries another woman, that you are committing adultery with that woman and you will not go to heaven? He said, it all depends on my own interpretation. That's my interpretation. That's the interpretation I'm giving to it. 
The word of God is no more absolute. It's relative. It depends on how you see it. <laughs> so you see it differently, I see it differently. The same word. Why is he seeing, why is he talking like that? Because that church where he sits down and listens, that's what he hears. You see this race? <laughs> you see this race? You see this race? Um, hello, hello, is, uh, are you there, Mr. Moses? That, that video, is it there? Just bring it for me, please. It's just about three, four minutes video. Let me show you. As little, as, as simple, as, as tiny, as, as infinite, infinite. Infinitesimal is big word. Play. The family, a bit close to the family, the, my pastor friend, both of them are pastors. The family, a bit close to the family, the, my pastor friend, both of them are pastors, the, the man and the woman, the pastors. He was with me three days ago. He was with me in the house just to share fellowship just three days ago. But then this incident happened sometimes in, um, I think this should be in June or July this year. Um, very sad. So while I was praying, we we're believing God for healing for this sister who for some reasons after she took the now... I'm not campaigning against COVID-19 vaccine. I'm not campaigning against it. And I'm not campaigning for it. Let everybody be led by the spirit. Shortly after she took the vaccine, she became ill. And um, a few weeks after she died. But uh, we're told it's one out of a million cases. So we were quite worried that um, she wasn't sick. She just... After taking that, something went wrong with her body and then some ailments started coming out, which doctors explained and said, well, uh, she had the, those ailments in her body, but then as a result of the shot, he brought it out and then all that. Very sad event. But the last moment of her life, I'm not talking about something I saw in, read in a book or watched a movie or read some people who say they saw Jesus or they, they had testimony. This is a family <laughs> close to us in Manchester. I was praying, we were all praying for our healing. The last two, three days, I'm sure the husband won't mind me sharing this because then I encouraged him to ensure that he shares this with uh, every opportunity he gets. While she was in the hospital, and she was ill, dying. Jesus showed up to her in the hospital there in Manchester. And the Lord said to her, according to the testimony, that do you know if you die now, you are going to hell? Then she argued with the Lord and said, but Lord, why? My husband is a pastor. I'm a pastor. We serve you. We have a church. We, <laughs> Lord, my children are, are born again and all that. And, um, there was pandemonium in the in the hospital because then the nurses and the medical practitioners thought she was going mad as she was talking to an invisible person and the lord said no you won't make it to heaven and i want you to tell your husband as well that none of you will make it to to heaven he said but we are pastors say yes you're going both of you go to hell if you were to die now and therefore I won't take you home yet until you make amendments. And he said, she said to the Lord, he said, Lord, what's the amendment? Then she said the Lord sat by her bedside in the hospital and told her so many things. Because of time, because of time I wouldn't want to go into details, but one of the things that she said the Lord told her, he said, you and your family, you go late to church every day. Watch this. I was, my heart broke. He said, you are the pastors of the church. 
The members of the church get to church before you. You stroll into church with your family. Worship is already on. That simple. He said, you have not portrayed a good example. Blah, blah, blah. You know, they, she said the Lord began and then Continue. I see. <clears throat> in the book of Hebrews chapter 12, the Bible says in verse 1, he said we are, <coughs> excuse me, he said we are surrounded, we are foreseen, we are also compassed about or surrounded with so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us you must lay aside weights you must lay aside sin that are always besetting us. Lateness to church. It will cost you eternity. <laughs> if this one is little, the, as little as it is, you can imagine other things that we do. You think that making heaven is a walkover? It is that it's something that you just be. You see, that's why Paul said, he said, a lot of us, we are running this race so carelessly without having an objective in mind, without being purposeful. We just live our life and live and wake up and move on with your life. And you just eat and drink and then continue. You move on with your, what the normal slangs today is, move on. You don't finish, you move on. You don't finish, you move on with your life. Move on with what? This is one of the reasons why Jesus Christ, we cannot experience his glory. Weights and sin. Because nobody will talk, talk about it. Because if we say it, we're going to hurt some people. We're going to offend some people. I'm ready to offend you. Ready. hundred times ready. Late. What about forsaking the assemblies of the brethren? <laughs> Do not forsake the assembling of the bread as it is the man. All those things, they are commandments. These are one of the many reasons why we don't experience, when we, we, Jesus Christ, God cannot just make himself open and available to everyone. Give me Psalm 25 verse 14. He said the secret of the Lord, God is a secret. He's a gold. That when a man discovers the kingdom of God is like a treasure hid in the field. The secret of the Lord is with them that do what? That fear him and he will do what? Show them his covenant. He will reveal himself to them. If you don't have the fear of God, you can't get it. If you don't fear God, if you don't revere God, if you don't respect God, if you don't tremble at his word, if you think that you come here is a play, is a joke, you come here and crack joke and laugh and smile in, at the altar when the service is going on and all of you don't know the presence of the person that you have come in contact with. You don't know who Jesus Christ is. I can picture myself in heaven with the Bible say, and there was silence for a moment for a, a period of about um, half an hour in heaven. And then all of a sudden, somebody's phone will ring in heaven. <laughs> this is all the kind of thing that we do here. The service is going on in the presence of Jesus Christ. Your phone, you are, you are, you are on your phone. You are on your phone. You on your phone. You brought our phone in the presence of Jesus Christ, in the presence of God, because you don't value it. You don't. You don't regard because you think it is wall. You come to a building, you know, where they have uh, they have um, whatever pulpit and chairs. It's a building, a physical building. You don't know what it is. The Bible says we have not come to that mountain that cannot be touched. 
I feel with temple. He said, but we have come to Mount Zion. That's where we are, the city of the living God. He began to mention the people that are in the presence because you could not see them with your eyes. Even the angel, they revered, they tremble. The angel that excel in strength, they tremble at his presence. And then not to, not to talk about you, a mortal man in the presence of Jesus Christ. And then tomorrow you expect to see his glory upon your life. It will not happen. It won't happen. You see this weight. You see this sin. Lay aside every weight and sin that doth easily beset us. Give me First Peter chapter 2 verse 1. He said it again, wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speaking. This is not the first, it's not the second or third or fourth or fifth or sixth or seventh or eighth or tenth that we have read these scriptures. But guess what? We have them plenty who are still living a life of malice and keeping malice and hypocrisies and evil speaking there are very many of them in the house of god they hear it every day so the bible say as we behold him with an open face not with a veiled face this is what veils you from having one-on-one -on -one with that man of galilee give me james chapter 1 verse 21 Wherefore, do what again? Lay apart <laughs> all filthiness and superfluity of nothingness, wickedness lodged in our hearts. And receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. Hey, the glory is here. You're not going to work for it. The glory of Jesus Christ, the glory of God is present. But the question is, how may we experience, enter into the experience of it? Because that is, is the presence of Jesus. That is what you need in this life. Everything bows to his presence. Every single thing. Men who walk with God don't walk with men. Men who walk with God, they don't walk with men. Those who walk with men, they don't walk with God. They are two mutual exclusive issues. They are two mutual exclusive. They are mutually exclusive. Those who walk with men, they don't walk with God. Those who walk with God, they don't walk with men. And because of that, you will be highly misunderstood. What is our problem? Flesh. Let go unforgiveness malice evil speakings backbiting jealousy envy loss of the eyes you see the, this person has it you want to have it Your problem is not having money or not having money. Your problem is not having money to eat food or have to have money to pay your bills. That is not your problem. You have been lied to. You have been deceived. 
Your problem is not having Jesus Christ. And when I mean not having Jesus Christ, I don't mean not having him in your heart. He is in your heart. There is no doubt about that. Has he been revealed to you just like it happened to Paul? Until Christ was revealed in me, it is by revelation. Except God, by the Holy Spirit, reveals Christ in you. Christianity and everything that you are doing will just continue to be nothing. There will be no moment in your life when you actually would sit down and think about him. Because our life is just encumbered, filled with everything but Jesus Christ. We are not engrossed. We are not passionate. We are not obsessed with him. So, he find that, how can this then be? Lay aside weights. Because if because he said there is a race, we are running. We are in a race, we are running. He said, lay aside weight because you can't be carrying weights and be running as fast as you could, as you should. You won't. What is that race? What is, a, what is that race we are running? Paul said it. He said, I gave up everything so that I might win Christ. It's about Christ. It's a race of winning him. It's a race of being conformed to his image and his likeness. That's the race. The race that is set before us so we can run it and run it effectively. You have to lay aside weight and be certain sins. And you know what those weights are. You come to church, you carry your phone. You come to church, you don't have Bible again. No more reading Bible because you have it on the... And so when they come, you fold your hand and you are looking. I say, open this one, you are looking. Because you have electric brain, is it not? Because your brain is electric. It's computerized. As if to say, when they ask you now to come and uh, present your contract, whatever, in the, in the, to the committee, you will just come and fold your hand and say, okay, this is my presentation. You won't have your documents. you written down. And when they are talking to you, you have paper and pen and all of that. You are jotting everything so that you don't miss anything out. Have, I've asked you a question. Have you, have, have you ever seen, for example, a carpenter, you want to do a carpentry work. You, you call a carpenter and say, please, I want you to come and help me roof this house and all of that. And he say he's coming to start work on, on Friday, tomorrow morning. And then the young man just come to start work. You've discussed everything, all your start. He said, I am actually, I don't have hammer. I don't have a nail. I don't have the, he, he just came just like this. That's what a lot of us do, Christians. Because we don't value, we don't value, we don't have value. What, what then, if you don't have value for God, for Jesus Christ, what else are you living for? We don't fear him. We don't respect him. We don't regard it. You come to church, you say, the choir, the person, he say, lift up your hands and begin to praise God. Your hands are down. And you expect to see the glory of God in your heart. You are a liar. Can we stand to our feet and begin to thank God and you are sitting down? You are a liar. It won't happen in your life. It will dry up. Can you imagine in heaven, they said, everybody be quiet. 
for 10 minutes and then somebody will begin to speak in tongues. There is orderliness. You are in the presence of Jesus. We need to be taught that we are in God's presence. We need to be taught how to host God. In this coming days and year, <laughs> in this coming season, in this coming season, there are those of them that differentiate themselves from the rest. It's not for everybody. A lot of people are going to fall casual. They are going to be casuals. There are going to be a lot of casualties because of 30, 60 fold. But nobody is pressing for that hundred fold. Because that's what God wants us to do. And he's coming to his church. Just what, you will see what will happen. You just be watching. Is it not 2022? It's just around the corner. Before the end of 2022, some of you will come, you will tell me, Pastor, hey, you know that thing that you used to say, now I believe you. You will watch, you will see. There is a revival that is coming. There is a great outpouring of the Spirit. God wants to revive his people, revive his church, return his glory and the power in the church. The end, the coming, the second coming of Jesus Christ, he's not coming to rapture or take up the church that is weak, full of weaknesses and sin and all of that. No! He's going to clean up his house. He's coming for a glorious church. The generation that are going to make mess of Satan himself. I mean Satan himself, he will make mess of Satan. No matter how dark the situation is, no matter how dark the world is, the darker the earth, the brighter the light. Even if it's any tiny, one tiny candle light hidden in a place, the bright, the, if you see how bright that candle would light will be. Because the darker it becomes, the brighter the light. That's why you say we are sin abound. Grace abound much more. When he say arise, shine, for your light is come and the glory is risen upon you. He said, because darkness is coming, gross darkness, there is darkness that is coming. That's why I read that scripture for you in, room, in Luke chapter 21, 34, 35, 36. He said, so that you will not be taken on a ways. You know, we'll keep saying this. We'll keep saying it over and over and over. But at the end of the day, some people are going to fall victim. You know why? Stiff nakedness, stubbornness, carried away by surfeiting, by the cares and deceitfulness of riches. Even the riches and the, work, the money you've been pursuing over since, the, since your lifetime and all of that. You have not you've seen, how many of you have seen, you, since you have been pursuing money, you have gotten up to 50 million. You've been pursuing it. 100 million, okay? You just had 100 million now right now in your account. That you are not, not, not that somebody gave you to keep. You just have 100 million naira to play about. You, because you have been pursuing it for, you know, how, you know how many years? Some of you, your account is in red. Some of you are owing. You are in debt. And we have not learned up till now. Is it not Jesus Christ that said, Do not seek for these things the way the Gentiles seek them. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need <laughs> of all these. You know why he said, Seek ye therefore the kingdom of God and his righteousness 
all these things will be added unto you. Do you know why we are not going for the kingdom of God and his righteousness? Do you know why? Because we don't believe him. Why don't you believe him? Because you don't know him. Why don't you know him? Because you don't have one-on-one -on -one with him. Why don't you have one-on-one -on -one with him? Because you don't respect him and you don't fear him, so he can't reveal himself to you. Wisdom is a principal thing. Therefore, all in all you are getting, get wisdom and understand it. But however, the fear <laughs> of God <laughs> is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of God. How many of you fear God? None. All of you, you will raise your hand, even with your leg up. How many of you fear God? You know what it means to fear God? You know what it means? He said, let God be your bread. Give God his time. Respect him. Revere him. Honor him. He will honor you. He will reveal himself to you. He will manifest himself to you. Jesus said this in John 14, 20, 21, 22, 23. He said, those of them that obey my commandment, say, I and my father will come and will make our body in him. And we will manifest ourselves if you obey him. Obedience to God. As long as this man of Galilee, as long as Jesus Christ is a second option, as long as he remains number two in your life, you will never see the glory of God. It's a hard truth, but it has to be told. As long as he is number two in your life, you will never see him show up in your life until you make him warm. Because he doesn't stand there to contend with any other thing. Do you know what the Bible says? Oh God. Give me Colossians chapter 1 verse verse 17, 16. Give me Colossians 1 16. He said, for by him how many things? Are you included in that all things? What about your boss? What about your money? What about that job? What about that business? What about that thing that your children? What about your wife, your husband, your children? What about, he said, all things by him were all things what? Created that are where? In heaven and that are in earth. Visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominion or principalities or power, all things were created by him and for him. That is the reason why he must be number one. He must take preeminence. Outside of him, there is nothing that is in existence. If I have an appointment with him and I have an appointment with the president, I will abandon the president and answer to him. I wouldn't even think twice. You must know where your allegiance is, lies. You must know. You must define it. Stop paying lip service. You know, there is a price pay for following him because you are going to step on people's toes. Verse 17. And he is before, <laughs> before what? All things. And by him, all things consist. Hey! He is before everything. And by him, everything. Who else? Verse 18. And he is the head of what? The body, the church. Who is the beginning? The firstborn from the dead. That in all things he might have preeminence. In how many things? In how many things? That he might have what? 
What is, what is the meaning of having preeminence? What is the meaning? Having supremacy, being number one. Is he number one? You know how you know? You have a prayer meeting by six o'clock. Have a prayer meeting by six o'clock. Where are you? Where are you? That's why I said, you see this lip service that we do. You see this lip service we pay. That's how our life will keep on being up and down like this. Is he taking the premium? And then tomorrow you want to see his glory show up. He will not. He will take preeminence in everything. You know, I keep saying it. Some of you will say because I pastor, pastor doesn't understand because he's not working. <laughs> Imagine if I am working today, I'm under a bus. There I have a bus over me. I report to. And the work, the, the work I am doing closes by the office closes by is it, is it four or five <clears throat> is it four or five five <laughs> you can't keep me one minute after five i don't care what you think you are doing i don't care who you are and i have i would have discussed with you and tell you say six o'clock is a no-go area and once we close by five, I have one hour to get to my church where I'm going to worship or pray and do whatever I want to do with God. Uh, Pastor, you know this is Lagos. Eh? I will park my car in the office and I will enter Okada. <laughs> I will enter Okada. I will enter Kekemawa. If it means trek, I will trek. I have tried it. What I am telling you is not what I think I will do because I have done it. I put my studies at veterinary medicine and all of that at the risk of all this. They fix a lecture by the time I'm supposed to be in the fellowship on Wednesday in the fellowship and you fix a, meeting, a, a lecture by whatever. That's your business. I won't go. And it is compulsory. And the man, because the professor went for sabbatical leave, and he just come about one week to the exam, and so he, I mean, two weeks to the exam, and so he passed all the lectures he's supposed to have taught. He didn't teach it. He just came, he wanted to, the whole lecture of about three months and all of that, he wanted to do it in two weeks. So he put a mandatory whatever, if you don't come, you're going to fail that exam. I said, I will better repeat the class. I will better repeat the year. How many of you will do that? If I did it then, I will still do it today. I don't care who that. Instead, I will leave that job. Oh, no, God. Put God first. He will put you first. And he's the head of the body. You know why I said it? Because some of you will say, hey, Pastor, he doesn't understand because he's not, a, he's not working. When I was a student, when I had something, that is what I, I lived for. For six years, I left my home and all of that and went and sat in the school listening to people. For six years. It's not a joke. And I played with it and I was ready to abandon it. Okay, I, I, am I not a graduate now? Veterinary message. So, where is the veterinary message? Where so many things they were teaching you and all of that, you don't even know whether they're in existence. After you, after all those things, where are they now? What am I doing with it? All those stories they told me and everything. Well, what am I doing with it now? Giving you information that you don't need that is useless to you. That's why I'm going to the one, <laughs> the one that is wisdom himself. That when I get closer to him, even all those things you are teaching me and all of that, he will reveal it to me. I still sat for that exam. That same exam. Oh God, my God, my God. At the end, I abandoned that lectures. Because it happened, it so happened that within that period of time was when there was a program coming up. 
and I will be the one that will leave my lectures in the morning. I will go to the works department. I will be carrying the one, carrying scaffolding and all of that and arranging them in the morning time and every other person was going to school. I abandoned that lecture. Then in the night, I will now go to read after the program. I will go and read. I will just clear everywhere and all of that. I will pose to read. The moment I move, I will sleep as I'm snoring. The whole book is wet with my saliva and all of that. I carried my book and I went back to the class. I'm telling you what happened to me. <laughs> I was praying. On the day of the exam, I went. I read the much I could. Guess what? When I entered that exam hall, I wrote that exam. The ones that I was able to read and remember, that was what came out. I wrote all of them. I passed. Out of 40 something students, only eight, about eight people passed it. I was one of them. Other people had to go and write supplementary. And pass mark is 60%. Oh. If you have 50%, you fail. Pass mark for our department is 60%, not, not 50. 60% is pass mark. If you score 59, you fail. He's the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, <laughs> the firstborn from the dead, that in all things that he might have the preeminence if you don't make this man preeminence number one priority in your life where are you going to again verse 19 for it pleased the father that in him should all fullness dwell all fullness, money, <laughs> prosperity, breakthrough, husband, wife, children, everything, they are all in him. Make him number one and see what will happen. It comes with a price. comes with a price. What is that scripture that says God will hide himself? Isaiah 45, 15. <laughs> he hides himself. Verily, truly, thou art a God that hidest thyself, O God of Israel, the Savior. He hides himself. I think he's in Proverbs 25 that says, it is the, the joy of the king to conceal things. And the honor of kings to do what? To seek it out. God conceals. He hides himself. You will find him. That's why he says, seek. Seek me and you will find me. Is a person. Seek to know him. Come closer to him. Tell him, I want to know you. I want to know you. Paul prayed. He said that I may know you. That I may know you. The only true God. There are no two. You must know. You remember the message you had last uh, program? You believe there is one God. Thou doest well. Satan also believed and he trembles. You must believe, you must come to know that there is only one. The, the oneness of God, that there is only one God, means that all authority and power and dominion and everything come from Him. He doesn't come from any other person. He doesn't come from Satan. They know that this is the only true God. The power and authority and dominion and everything exude from that person. If it doesn't come from Him, there is nothing else. They know they tremble because they are afraid of what he's going to do to them. They know 
that Satan can give them instruction and all of that. When this man shows up, he bruises his head right in their presence. You know, I'm going to, in the coming days and all of that, I'm going to take time. I will, tell, I will show you about five different compartments under the earth. Human beings are living there. There are people that are living there. There are beasts that are living there. There are creatures that are living there. Different compartments and all of that. There is one that is called the bottomless pit. There are beings, creatures that are there. The lake of fire is there. The hell. Hell is different from lake of fire. They are not the same. Hell fire is different from lake of fire. They, these are different compartments and all of that. There are different creatures and beings and all of that. And that is where all these things that are troubling and harassing the world is coming from. But the Bible tells us because that Jesus Christ has humbled himself and God gave him a name that is above all names. That at the name of Jesus Christ, every knee should bow, whether they be things where, or, or under the earth. He has authority and dominion. I love to know that person. I want to identify with Jesus Christ. I want to. That's why he said, the more you behold him, the more you look at him with an open face. Become like him. He's my obsession. He's my craving. He's my desire. He's my longing. He's my passion. He's my life. He's everything I have got in this life. Take every single thing and leave me with him. I'm fine. I'm contented. Jesus Christ is my life. What is your life? Your business? Your career? Colossians chapter 3, verse 4. Colossians chapter 3, verse 4. When Christ, <laughs> who is who? Who is your life? What is your life? Your business, your career, your husband, your wife, your children, your career. What is your life? I don't know about you, me. Christ is my life. Is the life that I live. My cry every day. I want to know him. I want to know him. I want to know Jesus Christ. I want to learn of him. As I come closer to him, I found out that he does not lie. <laughs> and so I adjust myself. As I come closer to him, I know that his words are yea and amen. He has integrity. He swears to his own heart and he doesn't change. I learn from him. As I come closer, I found out that he is love. I learned love from him. As I come closer, I found out that he's meek and he's lowly. I learned it. You see, as you behold him, as you come into his presence, that thing is, is you become like the person that you are relating with. The more you look at him, the more you become like him. That virtue that is in him, he enters you. That's why he says we behold him. As I come closer to him, I found out that that man is fearless. <laughs> I learned it from him. That spirit, he enters you. He's a spirit, he keeps entering. The more you behold him, that thing keeps entering. That is where the transformation. Not that you are beholding him and one week later, one year later, six months later, you are still looking like a devil. And say you are, you are beholding him. You are not. Let the truth be told. As I come closer, I found out that he can do all things. <laughs> he healed all manner of diseases. I believe I can do that. Everything I see in him, I know I can do it. 
they ask him a question. What shall we do in order that we may walk the works of God? Do you remember the question? Remember the answer in the book of John 6? What did he say was he? He said, if you want to do the works of God, believe in who? In me. In John 14, he said, in John 10, he says, the works that I do, you will do even greater work. Only if you believe in me. He didn't say if you fast and pray. Fasting and prayer. I have told you my fasting and prayer is so that I will know him. The more I know him, the more I come closer to him, the more I behold him with an open face as in a mirror, the more the things that are in him, the virtues that are in him, the things he could do, I, I see it in myself because... I am a son. As many as believe in him, to them, he gave power to become the sons of God. How many of you are sons? But it does not yet appear what we should be like. That's why John said, Behold, what manner of love is this that we should that God has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. You know what it means. <laughs> There's another revelation that you need. You'll be calling you, I am a son of God, I am a son of God. You don't have the slightest knowledge of what it means. If you do, your life won't be the same. Just like in that John said, he said, why do you want to stone me? Is it because of the works that I... He said, no, because of the works that we did not want to stone you. It's because you call yourself the son of God and thereby making yourself equal with God son of God. As many as receive him, he gave them power to become the son of God. Are you a son of God? If you are, it means that what is in the father is in you. It means that what the father has is you. It means that if you have seen the father, <laughs> they have seen you. It is revelation that will, will deliver them to you. The more you know, the more you actualize it, the more it becomes part of you, the more you experience it, the closer you come to him, the more you have faith. Because he's, the Bible, Paul was saying, he, he, the, one of the reasons he, he said he was, he was sent, he said he, he was sent to the Gentiles in order to preach the unsearchable riches of Christ. They are depths. The more you enter him, the more there are depths. He called it unsearchable. How can I read after him? Come on, how can I do this in after I come out and I'll be having problem with faith? Faith, doubting who? Why should it doubt you? Doubt what? Doubt what am I doubting? Doubt. This is, what dissolve, this is what dissolve unbelief and fear and doubt and double-mindedness and all of that. It's a revelation of Jesus Christ. Nothing else. Fasting and prayer will not make it. It's a revelation. I am fasting and praying. Blessed are they who taste after righteousness. For they shall be filled. I taste. I fast, I taste, I hunger. I want to know you, Lord. Help me reveal yourself to me. It's a revelation that that thing is done inside. It's inside. Paul said, until Christ was revealed in him. It's inside. That thing happens in, it's inside here. It doesn't happen outside. It's inside. Christ in you. You need to know who you are, who who. It not 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 who in you in you and you in him. That's not what I'm. You need to know Christ in you. <laughs> it's not you in you. It's Christ. As I come closer to him, I found out that he doesn't have any sickness in his body. I say to myself, no sickness. If for any reason. You remember the day, that day I was sick. You know, I was, I was, I was seeing stars. He said, should I buy you? I say, yes, get me. Malaria drug. 
she gave me the first one, I drank it. Nothing, nothing. I was still shivering. You remember, you noticed that I didn't take the second one. I didn't take. You know what I did? The thought came back to me because I had said it many years ago when I was growing. Because I had this kind of revelation and understanding those days. But the thing has left me. I used to tell them, I said, anytime I am sick, don't pray for me. I don't need your prayer. What I need you to help me do is to remind me the person that I am in Christ. If you can help me get back that in, my problem is over. So what I do when I get sick and all of that, it has happened. That's what I used to do in those days. I will bring a tape, worship tape, worship or worship or even praise. You know what we call praise is not praise. What we call worship is not worship. When they say worship, they are worshiping themselves. And in the name that they are worshiping God. When they say they are praising God, they are praising themselves and encouraging themselves in the name that they are praising God. I will put up worship song. You remember when you finally came in the morning, the music was playing. You played all through night. I was listening to it. I was listening to it. It got, I don't, I can't remember around two or three o'clock and all of that. My whole bed was wet with water everywhere. I was sweating. They, with the AC on. Immediately the whole thing cleared. Because as it was washed, it's not just wash. You see, when you worship God, when you wash, your mind, your imagination and all that, I am seeing Jesus Christ. I see myself worshiping him. I see him in his glory, sitting in his whatever. The, the, my attention and everything was inside of him. That even if you enter and be knocking and be whatever, I won't listen because I am not there. Though I'm in the room, but I wasn't in the room. You can be here, but you are not here. You can be in church, but not in Zion. You know how you can be in deep thought, and somebody is talking to you, and calling your name, you won't answer. I said, what is it? And all of a sudden, you just say, oh, sorry. Where were you? That's how when you are praying, when you are worshiping, not the one you are, when you are worshiping. Uh, oh, Lord, my God. When I'm in awesome wonders, I consider, I consider all the works that hurts have me. That's his greeting, somebody. <laughs> oh God. God have mercy on us. God have mercy on us. May God have mercy on us in Jesus' precious name. May our views, our attention, our desire, our everything change to now. It doesn't matter how, you see, it, you are the kind of people that God is looking for. You, you that are sitting down here. You are the type of people, you are the choicest material. That's why you are here. That's why he brought you here. Leave all these other ones. There are people who are too big, too big for God, and they are too busy for God and all of Leave them on their own time. They come to God and worship when they want and all of They go back. Leave them alone. Follow him. Serve him. Initially, when you start, it will be tough. It will be rough. But after some time... <laughs> After some time, the first becomes the last, and the last becomes the first. God will never come late in your case. He will never. It's you that think he's late. If you're going to run the race of winning Christ, we must lay aside every weight and sin that not easily beset us. Again, we come in the, to the very table, the communion table, 
the holy where the holy of holies is where the presence of God is where the the table of showbread our father we thank you for the privilege of coming to the table to the communion table where the body of Jesus Christ and his blood lay and we bless this bread as we bless this cup and as we eat and drink we remember the covenant that we have with you Lord in Christ we are reactivating and reenacting this covenant and asking you today that as, do, as we eat and drink that we'll be bound together united to be on the same of the same mind to mind the same thing that everything that this that separates us from today they will no longer be found within our midst in the name of Jesus Christ that whatever is the plan of the enemy to keep us away from you Lord and father that you will step in and break down every wall every barrier every limitation every hindrance everything that tends to separate us from you and from one another in the name of Jesus Christ Open our eyes to understand the truth of your word. Remember, Lord, you said it is one thing for us to be saved, but another thing is for us to come to the knowledge of the truth. Open up this truth, Lord. Bind our heart with it, Lord. You said in the last days, buy the truth and sell it not. Father, we will go and press for the truth and nothing but the truth. Help us in this time and age as we step into the next weeks and next month and in the coming year. Lord, that we'll be equipped, fortified to be able to stand against all the wiles of the enemy. After that we have fought, we will be the last men standing. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Glory be to your name. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Mm -hmm.